After studying this module, you shall be able to know more about impression formation and management, learn the various theories of impression formation and identify the various ways of impression management. At the time of meeting a person for the first time, we are actually pretty much bombarded with information. We usually see at a glance how the other person looks and how they are dressed up, how they speak and how they behave. Even though this amount of information is quite large, we somehow manage to combine it into an initial first impression of this person. Impressions often come to mind so readily that it seems as if they directly reflect the obvious objective characteristics of the target person without us getting involved in any active inferential construction of the impression. Research on impression formation has revealed a complex series of mental processes involved in construing the image of others and the meaning of their behavior. In this respect, impression formation is clearly an important aspect of social perception. Impression formation refers to the process by which individual pieces of information about another person are put together to form a global impression of the individual. This is due to the fact that an individual expects unity and coherence in the personalities of others. There are many explanations for impression formation. Solomon Ash conducted a research and applied Gestalt's idea of perception of whole to understand impression formation. He gave the individuals a list of traits possessed by a stranger and asked them to indicate their impressions of this person. The participants were asked to put check marks and traits which they felt fitted the overall impression of the stranger. For instance, in one such study, participants read one of these lists, intelligent, skillful, industrious, warm, determined, practical, cautious. In the second list, intelligent, skillful, industrious, cold, determined, practical, cautious. As is evident, the lists were the same except one word warm or cold. Hence, if people formed impressions by merely adding the traits together, the impressions formed from the two lists should not differ much from each other. However, people who read the list with the word warm in it viewed the stranger as happy, generous, sociable and popular as compared to people who read the list with the word cold. Hence, on the basis of this study, Ash concluded that in this case, the words warm or cold were central traits, that is, the ones which are most central in forming of the overall impression, while other traits are peripheral traits. He further concluded that forming impressions of others involves more than simply combining individual traits. Ash's model is also known as the configural model. Ash's later work too continued with the Gestalt theme of the unified nature of impression formation. According to the Gestalt theory, the whole is more and different from the sum of its parts. In his studies, Ash demonstrated that even when participants were presented with incongruent pairs of dispositional traits, for example, sociable or lonely. They resolved the incongruence by using the same organizing processes. They formed impressions of the imagined persons by summation of the information presented as well as the meaningful understanding of how two opposite dispositions could coexist in one person. Anderson proposed an elementaristic model of impression formation. 
This process was assumed to occur by the perceivers assessing the meaning of each element of information about the target person separately and then combining them algebraically into a summary impression. Hence, according to the algebraic model by Anderson, judgments could be simply combined in value. Values are ascribed to traits and traits are either simply added or averaged to form an overall score. However, there are many problems with the models provided by Ash and Anderson. Although the theories by Ash and Anderson provide a great deal of information about impression formation, there are some limitations. Neither of these theories takes into account the motives, goals and needs of the perceiver. Understanding social cognition as either theory driven or data driven is quite limiting. Also, there is likelihood that both influences occur. Some of the more recent models of impression formation are Brewer's dual process model and Fiske and Newberg's continuum model. Both these models are serial models. They assume that perceivers first use stereotype based processes in forming impressions and then if strongly motivated to do so or if the attempt to categorize the target person as belonging to any particular stereotype fails, attribute based processes are used. The main assumptions of the continuum model by Fiske and Newberg are that the perceivers prioritize category based processes, perceivers are active, piecemeal based impressions take much longer, category based impressions are more cognitively efficient and once a perceiver has begun to categorize, piecemeal impressions become less likely. Kunda and Thagard proposed a parallel constraint satisfaction model in which the various stereotypes, traits and behaviors act as interconnected nodes in a spreading activation network. The spread of activation between the various nodes is constrained by positive and negative associations. The nodes not only activate but also deactivate each other. The theory assumes that information that has been directly observed constrains the impression formed of the person. Also, impressions are formed holistically by the simultaneous activation and deactivation of associates of the observed information. These processes jointly constrain the impression of the target person. The primacy effect refers to the fact that traits which appear first have more impact in final impression. In classic studies by Ash A. All, when positive traits, example intelligent, were presented first, followed by less positive traits like envious, participants formed a more favorable impression of the target as compared to when the order was reversed. Several explanations have been offered to explain this effect. According to Ash, change of meaning interpretation, initially encountered traits, establish a preliminary impression which shifts the meaning of the other traits to be consistent with the meaning of the initially encountered traits. According to another interpretation provided by Anderson and Jacobson, primacy effect is attributed to inconsistency discounting. This means that perceivers give lower weight to traits that are inconsistent with preceding traits. A third explanation suggests a progressive decrease in attention over traits presented in a series. When perceivers feel that they have formed an accurate impression, they tend to pay less attention to subsequent information. This interpretation also accounts for the recency effect. When attention is drawn to each trait separately, people tend to be more sensitive to the last versus the first trait. Social psychologists believe that we all possess implicit personality theories which are beliefs about what traits or characteristics go together. These theories viewed as a specific schema suggest that when individuals possess some traits, they are likely to possess others too. 
such expectations are strongly shaped by the cultures in which we live. In sum, our impressions of others are often strongly shaped by our beliefs about what traits or characteristics go together. These beliefs are often so strong that we sometimes bend our perceptions of other people to be consistent with them in order to form impressions of others that reflect our implicit beliefs more than their actual traits. A cognitive perspective of impression formation. Social psychologists have made a great deal of progress toward understanding the nature of impression formation. A major reason for this progress has been the adoption of a cognitive perspective. For instance, when we meet others for the first time, we don't pay equal attention to all kinds of information about them. Rather, we focus on certain kinds of information, the kinds of input we view as being more useful. Further, to form lasting first impressions, we must enter various kinds of information into memory so that we can recall it at later times. And these first impressions of others depend upon our characteristics. We usually see others in terms of our own traits, motives and desires. Initially, the researchers that adopted a cognitive perspective addressed the following question. How do we manage to combine diverse information about other people into a unified impression of them? For this, there could be two possibilities. We could form unified impressions of others by adding discrete pieces of information about them or we might form our impressions by averaging available information in some way. Results were complex but generally pointed to the conclusion that averaging was the better explanation. The specific content of first impressions involves two major components, concrete examples of behavior they have performed that are consistent with a given trait that is exemplars of this trait and mental summaries that are abstracted from repeated observations of others behavior abstractions as they are usually termed. Some models of impression formation stress the role of behavioral exemplars. These models suggest that when we make judgments about others, we recall examples of their behavior and base our judgments and our impressions on these. In contrast, other models stress the role of abstractions also referred to as categorical judgments. Such views suggest that when we make judgments about others, we simply bring our previously formed abstractions to mind and then use these as the basis of our impressions and our decisions. It appears that the nature of impressions may shift as we gain increasing experience with others. At first, our impression of someone we have just met consists largely of exemplars. Later, as our experience with this person increases, our impression comes to consist mainly of mental abstractions derived from many observations of the person's behavior. The cognitive perspective has also shed new light on the influence of our motives on the kind of impressions we form and the processes through which we form them. Usually, we form impressions in the simplest and easiest way possible by placing people into large social categories with which we are already familiar. Then, we base our impressions in part on what we know about these social categories. However, if we are motivated to be more accurate, we may focus on people we meet more as individuals possessing a unique collection of traits. Various researches suggest that although we seem to form impressions of others in a rapid and effortless manner, these impressions actually come from the operation of cognitive processes related to the storage, recall and interpretation of social information. Impression formation and stereotyping. Perceivers prefer simple, well-structured impressions and they regularly construct and use categorical representations 
in their attempts to understand others. By construing others on the basis of the social categories to which they belong, perceivers make use of the wealth of related stereotype based material present in long term memory. Hence, whenever we encounter someone and categorize his or her as a member of a particular group, stereotypes about this group will exert an influence on the interpretive processes involved in forming an impression of the person. This type of categorical thinking shapes person perception in at least two important ways. Categorical thinking enables perceivers to use the activated knowledge structure for encoding and representation of any target related information and to derive evaluations and impressions of a target on the basis of the contents of the activated knowledge structure. Impression management. The desire to make a favorable impression on others is a strong one. So most of us do our best to look good to others when we meet them for the first time. Social psychologists use the term impression management to describe these efforts to make a good impression on others. Impression management is a goal directed conscious or unconscious process in which people attempt to influence the perceptions of other people about a person, object or event. They do so by regulating and controlling information in social interaction. People who perform impression management successfully often gain important advantages in many situations. Through impression management, people try to shape an audience's impressions of a person, object, event or idea. Self-presentation refers to the activity when people try to control impressions of themselves as opposed to other people or entities. The various techniques for boosting one's image fall into two major categories. Self-enhancement, which refers to the efforts to increase one's appeal to others and other enhancement, which refers to efforts to make the target person feel good in various ways. With respect to self-enhancement, specific strategies involve the efforts people make to boost their physical appearance through style of dress and personal grooming. People sometimes also use various types of props to enhance their appeal. For instance, they carry the right kind of handbag or in the case of male professors, sometimes hold a pipe while lecturing even if they really don't like to smoke it. Additional tactics of self-enhancement involve efforts to appear highly skilled or describing oneself in positive terms. One finding indicates that people use tactics to increase their appeal to potential dating partners. They describe themselves in favorable terms to impress people they want to date. In short, they bend the truth to enhance their own appeal. Also, Impression management now occurs in cyberspace as well as in face-to-face -face meetings. In terms of other enhancement, individuals use many different tactics to induce positive moods and reactions in people. A large body of research findings suggest that such reactions in turn play an important role in generating liking for the person responsible for them. The most commonly used tactic of other enhancement is flattery, which is making statements that praise the target person, his or her traits or accomplishments or the organization with which the target person is associated. Additional tactics of other enhancement involve expressing agreement with the target person's views, showing a high degree of interest in the person or expressing liking for them non-verbally. Let us now summarize. Impression formation refers to the process by which individual pieces of information about another person are put together to form a global impression of the individual. Ash emphasized the importance of central traits in impression formation and concluded that forming impressions of others involves more than simply combining individual traits. 
Asher's model is also known as the configural model. Other important models of impression formation include Anderson's algebraic model and Fiske and Newberg's continuum model. The primacy effect refers to the fact that traits which appear first have more impact in the final impression. Usually, when we meet other people for the first time, we seem to form a cognitive picture of them easily and without much mental work. Implicit personality theories are the beliefs about what traits or characteristics go together, suggest that when individuals possess some traits, they are likely to possess others too. Social psychologists have made a great deal of progress toward understanding the nature of impression formation through the adoption of a cognitive perspective. Whenever we encounter someone and categorize them as a member of a particular group, stereotypes about this group exert an influence on the interpretive processes involved in forming an impression of this person. Social psychologists use the term impression management to describe these efforts to make a good impression on others. The various techniques for boosting one's image fall into two major categories, self-management and other enhancement. At the time of meeting a person for the first time, we are bombarded with information. We somehow manage to combine it into an initial first impression of a person. Research on impression formation has revealed a complex series of mental processes involved. Impression formation is clearly an important aspect of social perception. Impression formation refers to the process by which individual pieces of information about another person are put together to form a global impression of the individual. Solomon Ash conducted a research and applied Gestalt's idea of perception of whole to understand impression formation. He gave the individuals a list of traits possessed by a stranger and asked them to indicate their impressions of this person. In one such study, participants read one of these lists. People who read the list with the word warm in it viewed the stranger as happy, generous, sociable and popular as compared to people who read the list with the word cold. Hence, on the basis of this study, Ash concluded that in this case, the words warm and cold were central traits while the other traits are peripheral traits. Anderson proposed an elementaristic model of impression formation. This process was assumed to occur by the perceivers assessing the meaning of each element of information about the target person separately and then combining them algebraically into a summary impression. Hence, according to the algebraic model, judgments could be simply combined in value. Values are ascribed to traits and traits are either simply added or averaged to form overall score. Some of the more recent models of impression formation are Brewer's dual process model and Fiske and Newberg's continuum model. Both these models are serial models and assume that perceivers first use stereotype based processes in forming impressions and then attribute based processes are used. Kunda and Thagard proposed a parallel constraint satisfaction model in which the various stereotypes, traits and behaviors act as interconnected nodes in a spreading activation network. Primacy effect refers to the fact that traits which appear first have more impact in final impression. In classic studies by Ash A. All, when positive traits were presented first, followed by less positive traits, participants formed a more favorable impression of the target as compared to when the order was reversed. 
when perceivers feel that they have formed an accurate impression they tend to pay less attention to subsequent information the recency effect refers to the phenomenon when attention is drawn to each trait separately people tend to be more sensitive to the last versus the first trait usually when we meet other people for the first time we seem to form a cognitive picture of them easily and without much mental work Social psychologists believe that we all possess implicit personality theories which are beliefs about what traits or characteristics go together these theories viewed as a specific schema suggest that when individuals possess some traits they are likely to possess others too such expectations are strongly shaped by the cultures in which we live A major reason for the progress in understanding the nature of impression formation has been the adoption of a cognitive perspective. Initially, the researchers that adopted a cognitive perspective addressed the following question: How do we manage to combine diverse information about other people into a unified impression of them? Results generally pointed to the conclusion that averaging was the better explanation. Various researches suggest that although we seem to form impressions of others in a rapid and effortless manner, these impressions actually come from the operation of cognitive processes related to the storage, recall, and interpretation of social information. A growing body of evidence indicates that in social perception as in many other areas of life some degree of inaccuracy or rather some illusions may actually be beneficial specifically recent research findings indicate that when romantic partners perceive each other as better than they really are this can have important positive implications for their relationships and they can enhance their personal happiness over a period of many years perceivers prefer simple well structured impressions and they regularly construct and use categorical representations in their attempts to understand others hence whenever we encounter someone and categorize her as a member of a particular group stereotypes about this group will exert an influence on the interpretive processes involved in forming an impression of the person according to pevinger and ebert impression management is a goal directed conscious or unconscious process in which people attempt to influence the perceptions of other people about a person object or event they do so by regulating and controlling information in social interaction people who perform impression management successfully often gain important advantages in many situations various techniques for boosting one's image fall into two major categories self enhancement that is efforts to increase one's appeal to others and other enhancement which involves efforts to make the target person feel good in various ways with respect to self enhancement specific strategies involve efforts people make to boost their physical appearance additional tactics involve efforts to appear highly skilled or describing oneself in positive terms In terms of other enhancement individuals use different tactics to induce positive moods and reactions in others 
The most commonly used tactic of other enhancement is flattery. Additional tactics involve expressing agreement with the target person's views, showing a high degree of interest in the person or expressing liking for them non-verbally. Usually have strong reasons for wanting to look good to others. Generally, we can do quite a good job because we can engage in positive self-presentation in a relatively automatic and effortless manner. Some situations in which we try to make a good first impression on others, however, are demanding ones. As a result, we experience cognitive overload. Cognitive overload can interfere with our efforts to look good in the eyes of others. Let us now summarize what we have learnt in this module. Impression formation refers to the process by which individual pieces of information about another person are put together to form a global impression of the individual. Ash emphasized the importance of central traits in impression formation. Other important models of impression formation include Anderson's algebraic model and Fiske and Newberg's continuum model. The primacy effect refers to the fact that traits which appear first have more impact in final impression. Implicit personality theories are the beliefs about what traits or characteristics go together suggests that when individuals possess some traits, they are likely to possess others too. Social psychologists have also adopted the cognitive perspective to understand impression formation. Stereotypes about a group exert an influence on the interpretive processes involved in impression formation of a person. Impression management refers to efforts to make a good impression on others. The various techniques for boosting one's image fall into two major categories, self-enhancement and other enhancement.